I think I'm gonna get too distracted filming out here. I, <laughs> um, I put notes on my laptop. So if I'm looking down, that's why. Today I'm going to be talking about my eating disorder. I feel like I'm fully healed except for occasionally, not very often. It flares up a little bit, but I can handle it. I can take care of it. It's not like, I don't have the fear of it coming back fully and taking over. <laughs> um, I laugh when I'm uncomfortable. So I might be laughing a lot. So I am going to go over how I think it started, what it was like, and what I did to help heal myself. The squirrel is distracting me. I have to go inside. Well, let's go find a different spot. This is like highly annoying because it's really nice outside. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm gonna film in here for a little bit, and then when I get too warm, I'll go... Okay. <laughs> Ready? I'm not, really. <laughs> so, I think that this probably started, um, I want to say when I was like 12, 13? Yeah, I can't pinpoint exactly when it started. It was like a lot of things, I think, outside of me that I internalized without really knowing it. Uh, my parents have some food sensitivities of their own, so I think I think I took that concern on for my own body, so I learned to be kind of scared of certain foods. Sugar, dairy, gluten, which I don't blame them for at all. Like, I know, I know they did their best and they had their own things they had to look out for when it came to food. I also remember other distant family members saying, like, kind of messed up stuff to me, specifically this one lady. I think I was 12 or 13. She like looked at me. We were alone, so no one else heard her say this. She looked at me. Your grandpa used to be skinny too and like walked away from me. And I was like, the fuck? <laughs> Someone in a grocery store warned me not to get these cookies because it was gonna go to my hips. Like just weird stuff. Also at school, I got bullied for looking anorexic when I wasn't, um, like at the start of high school. There was this one teacher that like, <sighs> Yeah, that was a whole big mess. She was definitely like a bully and she picked on people for what they looked like. Um, I had her for three years. She had to measure our like, I don't know why they had to do this. It was part of the curriculum, which is fucking stupid, but they like measured us before and after a certain like, a certain module, not a module, a certain like section of our curriculum for PE. Anyway, she had to measure us and <laughs> um, because your chest is supposed to be the same, the same as your hips and mine was not. I have small boobs <laughs> and she was like, she just said really inappropriate stuff um, basically about my body and I thought it was just me that she said stuff to, which no and then I learned later when I was about to graduate that she said something to my someone in my sister's grade and then I wrote a letter to like one of the guidance counselors and like, mm, which I don't know if that even helped anything, but that was the most I could do at the time. Basically what I'm trying to say is I think I internalized a lot of what people were saying to me. I was fucking 12 years old. I hadn't hit puberty yet. Like, fuck off. <laughs> like, um, yeah, I don't know. The fact that like random people like feel like they have the right to say anything about what you eat or what you look like is just like so messed up. Especially if it's like a younger teenage girl. People have said stuff to me at work like the past few months, <laughs> like stupid stuff about me being skinny and like whatever okay, I don't care anymore. It's just like, my brain is more developed now and I can dissoci dissociate from what people are saying to me. Like, I know it doesn't fucking matter what they say. Um, but when I was 12, I did not know that. So basically, I remember doing a lot of blog Blogilates videos, trying to get thinner thighs and get rid of my lower belly fat, which like, <laughs> um, first off, I'm a woman <laughs> and I know women can have abs, but like, I, I was like 13, 14. I didn't fucking need abs. <laughs> I don't need them now. I just, um, 
I don't know. I, I thought that that was what like health was. Yeah, I don't know how long I tried to do that for. It's so weird being praised for like being skinny or like shamed. It like, it's so confusing for anyone of any body type. I mean, like, it's just a fucking body. <laughs> this is really weird to talk about. <laughs> I was worried about my health and about gaining weight. When I, okay, so think of like bagels example. I thought bagels would be bad for me and would be hurting my health. Um, so I was scared of bagels and other foods. Um, I made a list at one point when I, I'll get to that later. So for example, I overheard my sister once asking my mom to buy croissants. I got freaked out because I didn't want to eat the croissants. I didn't want them being in the house because I would eat them if they were in the house because I love croissants. Why is she letting herself have croissants and I'm not allowed to have croissants? I think that was something one of my, <laughs> my therapists <laughs> said to me one time because Siobhan wanted to go get a blizzard and I was like, oh, like, I don't know if I should go like with her to get a blizzard, like she can get one. I don't think I'll, I don't remember exactly the conversation. Why is she allowed a blizzard and you're not? And I'm like, hmm. I got stressed out and then that made me be like up here angry. I was like, mm -mm, no, 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 we're not getting those croissants. <laughs> Which eventually led to, I went vegan um, when I was 16, I believe, 16, almost 17, um, to try and fix my stress around food. So I told myself, well, first I watched like a documentary on animal factory farming scared the shit out of me. Yeah, I saw what they did to cows. I was sobbing. I'm like, okay, well, fuck. I can just be vegan and like eat whatever is vegan and that can be my way of like solving the complex analyzation of food in my head every time I try to eat something. Which you can guess that didn't work. <laughs> I mean, I'm still vegetarian today. I like being vegetarian, but it's not, it's not for the reasons of trying to like decrease stress when eating or deciding what to eat. I was vegan for three years. I went to Disney World and at Epcot, I was like, okay, I'm probably not gonna be vegan anymore. <laughs> um, like, so I decided to be vegetarian. I was still mostly vegan and sometimes vegetarian. I think that was around the time I went to it might have been the year before this. I tried to go to therapy because I'm like, okay, I'm having a lot of stress about what I'm eating and food and I'm getting like worried for other people when they're eating certain foods and like I remember I was like arguing with one of my boyfriends when I was like 17, 18 because he thought meat was good for you to eat and I was like no like and so it was mostly it was mostly me being anorexic and not knowing <laughs> that I had issues with food along with like the vegan stuff but I got really off track, what was I saying? Okay, 2019, I believe, I started seeing a therapist. Um, I like talked to her on the phone and I expressed my concern. I'm like, I don't think that my stress around food is normal. Like, I don't know, I'm worried about gaining weight. Like I was telling her all these things and she did not really pick up that I had an eating disorder. So, <laughs> There are some therapists that are probably better at other things and some that can help more with other stuff. Um, she was not one that was able to help me with this. I guess I don't really have to get into that. She, she basically encouraged my like portion control and like, I was also living alone for the first time and I, I think I ate to like not be like bored. I don't know, <laughs> but it just, whatever she was trying did not help me. I'm like, this isn't working, so I stopped. Um, it was quite a few months though, I think. I watched a video, Kaylin Nicholson, um, it was like skeletons in my closet or something uh, about her eating disorder. And it made me realize, mm, I still do have a huge problem. <laughs> Um, I didn't think I had an eating disorder. I thought I had like disordered th thoughts around food. Uh, I, I don't know what the difference is really, but yeah. So basically I found a different therapist because I noticed the unhealthy food behavior. 
think I started to binge eat things or like didn't know how to like not compulsively eat. I was developing other issues. So in the fall, I think it might have been September or November, I noticed my anxiety was super bad. Um, so that was another thing, but I was like, okay. I could not deal with my anxiety at how bad it was. The food thing came up again and I was like, okay, I have a problem. So I found a different therapist. Actually, my mom found her for me. So thank you, mom. I still talk to her like once a month today, the therapist, <laughs> uh, just to like check in. The first few months we had to go over like trauma stuff that I had been through um, before we could get into the food. So that took a few months. I think I got to like, um, I think it was like April, 2020 is when I started to do like work on my eating. First she had me start doing like exposure therapy. So eating foods that I was scared of. So I did make like a list. I don't know if she told me to or if I just did it on my own. I made a list of foods that I was scared of, like juice, mm, cereal, bagels, dairy, like there's a long list, but anyway, that was really, really hard to get myself to start eating that stuff. I kind of had to make it like into a game. It was very hard because I thought I was hurting myself by eating those foods, which I wasn't, I was actually healing myself um and I remember I don't know if I the first time I spoke to her about it I I was like okay like yeah I, I can eat I can start eating like <clears throat> things that I'm scared of and I remember I spoke to her like a week or two after and I'm like I'm I'm worried like that I'm hurting myself like I was starting to get stretch marks on my thighs. I already had some on there from like puberty, but like it was it was going down my leg a bit more and that freaked me the fuck out. Um, so I told her I was worried I was hurting myself and she was like, okay, well, you're gonna have to decide to like get better or <laughs> tough love. I don't know what she said, but it worked and I was like, okay, I gotta like push through this and help myself get better. It was like I had two voices in my head almost. Like one was like, no, this is not healthy. You are hurting yourself. You gotta like stop doing this. <laughs> and then the other part was like, no, it's okay. You just gotta push through this and you'll be fine. I just, I tried to notice when the other, the voice that I thought was helping me was not helping me basically. And that was really scary to realize. After a while, Nothing bad happened to my health, and I saw that everything was fine. I remember I like woke. I wake. <laughs> I remember I woke up. Um, one morning, like you know, when you're kind of still awake, like you're half awake. I think I had like some sort of like nightmare or like some scary dream or I don't know. But I woke up and I was so scared. I remember I was like reaching for my arm because I was like worried this part was getting like fat or something. It was so stressful. My I noticed my body was changing and I didn't know like how much it was gonna change. <laughs> Crying. Like as long as you're healthy, it doesn't matter what you look like. I'm not sure at what point, but I remember it kind of, it felt like a flip switch to my head and I was like, all right, I'm gonna embrace any weight gain and that was like the game changer. <laughs> Before that happened though, I watched, what did I write? I'm getting ahead of myself. I wrote, I feel way better in my body ever since inviting weight gain. Like I am so much more comfortable in my skin now. It's a really nice feeling. Um, <laughs> but while I was still scared, I had to like watch, uh, Kate Noel did some videos on like eating. I can't really remember. She was eating like fear, fear foods or something and like watching her eat those foods that I was also scared of and like embracing weight gain helped a lot. And I also watched a TED talk. Um, I'm not sure what it was called. I'll put a picture here if I can find it. But basically in our kitchen, I'm like, okay, I'm hungry. I want to eat a burrito. 
but then I was getting stressed out about eating the burrito. <laughs> But then I watched that video and I wrote like a letter to my body and like thanked it and all that stuff. And then uh, I ate the burrito and I felt very proud of myself. <laughs> I would not be crying over wanting to eat a burrito now. <laughs> I don't think I'd even give it a second thought, which is really nice to see that growth. <laughs> I'm really happy that I gained weight. It wasn't like a huge difference but for me at the time it felt like <laughs> a big change um big scary change i thought i was hurting myself i think it was in maybe october or november of 2020 i remember i was talking to uh, my therapist and i was like i feel happy in my body now or i feel comfortable in my body now i'm not saying it got like completely easy after that but it was definitely a good step in the right direction. Actually, it was a huge step. And I'm very proud of myself for getting to that point. It was really hard. <laughs> Pushing yourself to be uncomfortable every day is not easy. Um, I, it did still flare up um, a few times after that, like if I got stressed out or let those thoughts come back. But um, mostly I was scared that it would come and over, like take my brain again. So I was pretty, vigilant I feel like I feel I'm freaking dying bro um <laughs> basically I love myself and even though people say shit stuff occasionally now it really doesn't bother me and the fact that I grew through that process <laughs> I'm very proud of myself I'm really glad that I can enjoy food now and knowing that my worth is not attached to how thin I am and that people that say shit are just having their own, like, problems with their own brain. What is on my arm? I don't know. Like, a happy person wouldn't go around saying shit about other people's bodies. I'm really proud of myself. And I hope that this was either, like, educational or helpful. I don't know how helpful it would be if you are struggling with food, I highly recommend finding a therapist because she definitely pushed me to heal. So I hope you find a good therapist. If you don't, find another one. If I can do it, you can do it. I love you.